Hi and welcome back to Next Level Sim Gaming. So, hot off the heels of a previous video, we thought we'd seen the final Aces BIOS update for now. But this morning, a surprise message from channel contributor appeared to me saying, guess what, there's another one. Joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly, I can't stand this. So, within literally two weeks, here we are again. So this BIOS update is pretty non-descriptive and refers only to modify strings in BIOS settings. Now, modifying strings relates to, for example, auto, enable, disable, or anything else that we have fundamental control over. So in this video, we're going to apply the update and try and identify exactly what has changed. But more importantly, do these changes affect performance? Right after checking out keysfan.com, this video sponsor. Keysfan, who are highly rated on Trustpilot, offer a wide range of genuine OEM software keys with up to 62% off using the channel discount code. Links in the video description. Check out this genuine Windows 11 Pro key for an amazing 52% off. So don't forget to check out the links in the video description and get some amazing deals on product keys. Because what's best to get your gaming PC ready for those next level sim games than upgrading your operating system and taking advantage of these amazing deals? So here we are again. Despite my previous video saying it was the final microcode revision, we have yet another microcode revision which is modifying the strings in BIOS settings. So on the ASUS website, your model variation number may vary depending on the brand of motherboard you have. This particular one is the ASUS Tough Gaming. If you have a Strix or any other motherboard in the ASUS family, then the model variation will be slightly different. First of all, we're going to download the file and we're going to download that onto the desktop. And when on the desktop, you can see we're just going to have the, the zipped file here. And we're just going to extract that and create a new folder. A name of folder of update 1805. I'm just going to extract it to it. I'm going to click on the BIOS renamer and you'll see that the Tough Gaming will then change to a TGZ file. And that's the file then ready to deploy onto the motherboard. You need to then drag the TGZ file onto a suitable USB stick, insert it to the computer, reboot and go into BIOS. Once you are in BIOS, if you then select the tool option and go to the Asus Easy Flash, locate the USB stick as you can see here, which is a 32 gig file. You're then going to get a warning about BitLocker recovery, so make sure you have your BitLocker recovery key or it will cause you tremendous problems. I don't have BitLocker enabled on mine, and uh, we're just sending to simply accept the updates. Uh, this, which is just showing here, is actually a previous update, but I've just reused the video segment just to show you the process. Now, once the process is complete, which takes some time, it will show you that it's been successful and that the system will be rebooted. So, into part two, which is setting the profile in BIOS. So we are back into BIOS. I just had an email from a nice chap called Ian who said, I love your videos, but I'd like it if you could take it a bit slower and step-by-step -step in the actual BIOS section. So here we go. If you reset batch factory settings using F5, there's going to be a slide introducing each section so you can actually pause at the relevant stage as you see here. Enable Asus Advanced Overclock Settings and that's found under the AI Tweaker. And as you can see here, we're just selecting that. Once we've selected, it will give us a warning and we just simply click on OK once we're happy with that. Then the next section we are going on to is going to be press F9 to search and ensure that the undervolt protection is disabled. We need to do this so that we can enable the software which is Intel XTU. I will leave links to all the software used in the video in the video description. We need to press F9 again and we need to search Intel virtualization and we need to disable Intel virtualization. And once again, this is required so we can actually run Intel XTU, but it also gives you a slight performance boost. And the only reason you probably need this is if you run in a virtual machine. We then need to disable Intel Adaptive Boost technology, which is found under AI Tweaker again. So in, as you can see here, we're just clicking on Disabled. And once we're happy with that, then we will then need to then change the Asus Multi-Core Enhancements, also found under the Asus AI Tweaker section, which is just underneath. We are going to go to Disabled, and we are going to Enforce All Limits. And the reason for that is because we're going to set some power limits. We then need to set our XMP. So we'll do that in the AI Tweaker section of the AI Overclock Tuner. 
and I'm going to use the XMP tweak setting. And the reason for the XMP tweak setting is because it runs the actual XMP profile at the actual maximum performance that this system is capable of. So it's going to give you a little bit of additional performance as well. There's two profiles in here, but I'm just going to choose the 7200 mega transfers. There is a 7400 as well, but it doesn't work very well. I'm going to then set the performance call ratio to synchronize all calls. And the reason why we're synchronizing all calls is to ensure that the system stability is at its absolute best. And the synchronization call ratio needs to be set to 55, which translates to 5500 megahertz. And we do that by simply typing 55 in the all call ratio limit. As you can see here. And we then need to set the load line calibration to level four. Uh, the reason we set it to level four is to give ourselves a little bit of headroom because we are using the ASUS overclock settings. And you'll see here when we select the CPU load line calibration, we've got level four. And just after that, it recommends that's for the overclock settings being used. Then we need to go on to the power management, so internal CPU power management. We're going to disable the unlimited ICC max. So it's running the untethered power limits at the moment. We don't want that to happen, so we want to disable the system from being able to do that. We then need to change the CPU core cache current limit to 400 amps. And once again, many people have asked why are you doing these settings. This is a recommended setting for the extreme profile on the Intel defaults. We then need to change the long duration power limits and we need to change that to 253 watts. We do that by simply overtyping the auto 2253. And we then need to do the same with the short duration power limits and we then need to change that once again to 253 simply by overtyping. And then we need to apply the actual undervolt itself. Now, there's been a lot of questions about undervolting, and undervolting is personal to your system, so you're going to need to find the relevant undervolt for yourself. So I'm not going to cover it in this video, but there is another video that I'll link at the end, which can go into this in a bit more detail. So first of all, we need to go into the internal CPU power management and the global core SVID, we need to change it to adaptive. We need to change the offset negative and then we need to set the offset voltage. We're going to begin at 0 0.005 if it was yourself. I'm going to set an undervolt of 0 0.07500. And I know that's safe for my system. And just for the demonstration purposes of this in this video, it's, it serves its purpose. Uh, the fan configuration is one that people ask a lot of questions about as well. So when we are benchmarking, we disable any background applications and that will then make the system run at whatever process file is set within here. So I'm just changing it simply to turbo and at 600 RPM. Once we're happy with that, we then need to change the service and reset. Now, just a reminder that this video is based on the Intel i9-14900K. Now, it may vary based upon your system specifications. So, as you can see here, these are the PC specifications used in the creation of this video. So, on to part three, and this part we will be testing the BIOS. So, the first thing we need to do once we reboot into Windows, we need to go into Task Manager and click on Performance and Memory. And you can see here that it's on the actual XMP speed of 7200 mega transfers, which is what we set. Once we're happy that's correct, then we can then move on to the first benchmark. So the first benchmark we're going to use is the Maxon Cinebench R23. Now I've done two passes on R23 and we would look on an undervolt of around minus 0.75 of a score of around 40,000. So the first benchmark run you can see here is on 40,376. And I'm just going to run that again. I actually run it around three times. You can then run it for a long duration if you wish, but just run it a few times, obviously just to ensure it is where it it should be. Um, once again, this will vary depending on RAM speed and other system specifications. So bear in mind, obviously, the previous slide and showed you what my system is running. So this gives us a score of above 40,000 again. Once we're happy with that, then we'll move on to run on to a stress test. So the stress test we're using is the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. And once again, I'll link in the end of this video a link to the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility Guide. So real good uh, tool to use. Uh, I use it uh, to software test undervolts and to software test changes. Uh, if we've made any changes, such as a BIOS update, which we've done today, obviously, then we would 
test the ability of any undervolt that we're applying and they would look for any anomalies within here. Now, I'm pleased to say that, uh, as you'll see in the moment, the stress test passes successfully based upon that. Uh, I've been using the BIOS update for around two weeks now, so I don't like to produce a BIOS update video immediately. I like to test it and make sure that obviously everything is correct before bringing the video to you guys. So everything is good. Um, it seems to be no different really on the surface. I can't actually see any visible differences as to what's actually occurred. Uh, I'm sure it's obviously just a revision to the actual underlying microcode or possibly something in the menus that I haven't been able to see. But uh, all the applicable undervolt options are in there and everything is as it should be. So as you'll see, that stress test passed with zero errors. I would then move on then to running an actual gaming benchmark. So once we're happy with the Advanced Vector Extensions 2 test, which is a very demanding test on the CPU, we're then going to move on to benchmark number 2, which is the once again familiar 3D Mark Time Spy, which is the one I like to use. Um, the reason I use 3D Mark Time Spy is it's a good CPU physics test at the end, but it pretty much injures the whole system. There is a reliance on the GPU to the CPU. So if there are any anomalies, you'll see a differential between the actual normal score on the GPU as well. So it's a good overall benchmark to use. And if you keep a history of a benchmark, it enables you to obviously look for any anomalies between undervolts and different tunes that you've done. So we're now onto the second GPU test, which is great. Graphics test 2. Um, once again, the actual outcome is, as you'll see, is excellent and there have been no issues with the BIOS uh, that I've encountered, I'm pleased to say. So, once again, the 4900K seemingly has the issues rectified, apart from the very poor performance issues on the actual Intel default settings, which once again takes into enthusiast hands to rectify those issues and provide stable gaming performance. So just on to the final CPU test, you can see here the physics test I was referring to, and then we're on to the actual summary. Now I'm going to put an actual uh, link to the actual summary page in here so you can look at it in a bit more detail in the video description. And once again, everything is as it was with a previous BIOS outcome. The score is pretty much the same. I've actually run the benchmark a number of times and the score has been excellent on every occasion uh, running these exact same profile settings as previously. So thank you once again for watching. And there are some links here to some other videos in this series, which I'm sure you'll find of help. If this video has helped you, it would be hugely appreciated if you would hit that like, press subscribe and share. And remember, it costs nothing, but it really helps me bring you more videos. Until next time, take care and I'll see you again in the next video.